Hey, what's up guys? Today I'm just going to be talking about uh, improving your page speed insights and your GT metric scores. I've got 100, 100 on both of these on mobile and desktop for my site on page speed insights. GT metrics just recently changed their layout here, so I guess we'll be looking into some of these performance things, but uh, I'm just going to give more of a high level. Last last video I was talking more about a specific thing that you could increase in GT metrics with the Y slow score, which uh, appears to have been deleted from their metrics. So uh, hopefully this higher level thing will, you know, apply to more people and get better results for for your website. So first off, we can just talk about the the most basic thing is minifying your assets. So uh, what you can do is compress your JS and CSS. Some optimizations for JavaScript and CSS might uh, impact your your website's layout. Like if you JavaScript more specifically, because if if you compress things and they rely on certain libraries and they're loaded out of sync because of the compression, uh, that can be an issue. So if you use a plugin like I use W three. Uh, total cache. This is the plugin that I use for WordPress. But if you're if you're not hosting on WordPress or uh, any kind of content management platform like it, you can do these optimizations either with like a build script when you are working on your your website. You could make like a little Python script that would minify everything for you, or you can just use an online thing like a uh, online. CSS minifier. Use one of these, paste your code in, copy the minified code, paste it into a different file, and then use the minified version as what is actually being requested on your website for uh, assets. CSS is more, like if we look at uh, this CSS file, it's still human readable, right? Like we see position, absolute, right, zero, top zero. It's not uh, obfuscated, right? This is still human readable. Whereas with minified JavaScript, this is uh, it has optimizations in it that make it so you're you're improving performance but re reducing readability. So for for that, it's the same process. You just search up a, a JavaScript minifier. But if you have WordPress or some kind of content management platform, I'm sure that there's a a minifier plugin that you can use. This is my favorite for WordPress. Uh, An asset minification. So that, what I mean by that is just any kind of uh, static asset that you have, like images or your fav icon or things like that, which are still being requested. As long as you can make those smaller and smaller, uh, you're going to be in good shape, right? So, for example, these images here. Uh, these are. Minified, I don't know if you can really tell with these ones, but I, I have them smished to a WebP format, and then I also have them compressed. So for, for page speed, if you can load your assets faster, obviously it's going to be faster. So that's what I mean with this minification. This is the absolute bare minimum that you could probably do to your website, this and lazy loading, uh, to improve the, the page speed. You're just making the transfers smaller and more efficient. So. Also with W3 Total Cache, you can combine files, which is also really nice, especially if you have a slow server. If you have a slow server, the startup time of a connection is going to be one of the main slow parts of it, like when your server and the client are making the handshake to, to make the connection to transfer data between each other. If you can reduce the amount of requests for handshakes, then that's also very nice. So. This is the the bare minimum, right? Like get your get what you already have in a better way. Then we'll talk about lazy loading. You guys have probably already heard about this, but if we here I'll just clear the network tab here. If we look at this, so it just finished loading everything. If I continue to scroll down, we see that another asset just loaded and another one. We keep going. Oh, there's another one. And we keep going. There's another one. See? So that means that I don't have to load the entire page right off the bat, right? Because if somebody's just sitting at the top here, they're not going to see these assets that are at the bottom. 
It also is important to have your first paint, right? That's what they want in uh, in both of these. We have first content, full paint. That's what they mean by this this frame here versus this frame here. So here, it had nothing. Here, it had everything at the top. Same with this, right? Nothing, nothing, nothing connecting to the website, and then boom, we've got most of it. You can. It's probably going to be difficult to tell in the in the video, but the I have this icon at the top of my website, and in the GT metrics, it hasn't loaded yet at the first frame. Uh, that's not lazy loading. That's my assets just being streamed in slower, right? Because the obviously the HTML is going to load faster than most of the flat assets that you have. So that's another thing that you can do. That's called lazy loading, and most of the time you just uh, get this in the same kind of H the same kind of optimization suites for your CMS. So W3 Total Cache also does lazy loading, I think. Maybe if it doesn't, maybe I'm using EWWW uh, image optimizer for lazy load of images. Probably. We can see. I'll, I'll log in in a second here. But lazy loading your assets is also pretty important. So those are two two things that you can do to your website. Maybe lazy loading could possibly change your formatting a little bit and minifying JS and assets and things, or JS and CSS, maybe you have potential for actually changing stuff in a, in a way that you don't know how to fix. But these two are very simple optimizations that anybody could do and you have very low risk of actually making any kind of headache for yourself. And these kinds of things are are also just going to speed stuff up. Also in midification, if you run your own server, uh, your own VPS or something, you probably want to turn on gzip in your in the headers for whatever web server you're using. They're probably already on by default, but if uh, if when you're testing with GT metrics or something, it tells you that you're not compressing your assets, your web server can send data to the browser in a compressed gzip format, which will also improve the uh, responsiveness by reducing the transfer load. Now we're going to talk about things that are actually like have it have a potential of breaking something and making a headache for you. Removing and simplifying plugins and libraries. So uh, by libraries I mean anything that you are using that is not just core HTML, CSS, JavaScript built into the browser already. So like jQuery, Bootstrap, uh, things that just made your life easier. So it, especially if you're using static pages, if you can compress your libraries into just exactly what you need instead of the entire uh, CSS or JavaScript library that you're using, that's really useful. And for WordPress, I think a, a lot of people are either running a WordPress or a CMS type thing. If you can just shut off plugins that you know are slowing down your website, that would be pretty good for you too. Uh, I was using... For these kinds of code blocks here, I was using a WordPress plugin called Prismatic, Prismatic WordPress. I was using this, which was slowing me down by quite a bit. It was using JS to um, get this formatting done correctly. And I've just swapped it out for a different plugin that does the exact same thing, but is like three times as fast. So if you can find situations like that, when you're when you're loading your page and you look at this network tab, also in uh, Google PageSpeed Insights, if you have some uh, some red suggestions, uh, most of the time it's over here in mobile with the uh, over here in these opportunities, it's going to tell you what JS you're using that. Maybe it's down here with uh, with these ones. You might have like four or five files. One that you recognize as, oh, that's JavaScript for this plugin. I can tell by the name, or uh, that's JavaScript for this plugin. I know because I disabled it and then I retested the page. So, if you are interested in reducing the load speed, obviously, the the way of going about that very simply is to just delete things that are being loaded, right? Or simplifying them. So let's just really quickly log into my site here. And look at my plugins. Obviously my site 
you know, nothing, nothing too fancy. I just have text, images, and uh, some code snippets. That's really all I do. And over here in my plugins, I have a sitemap, two things for uh, just limiting login attempts for brute force. And then I have AMP pages, the image optimizer, the code snippet plugin, and W3 total cache. So that's what I've got. This is a very bare bones website. If there are things that you can't uh, disable on your site, you might want to look into what are the alternatives and are they faster or are they not? Might be worth looking into. But obviously, if you can reduce the amount of plugins that you're using or the amount of libraries, just the amount of things that your server has to transfer to the client, you're going to speed things up. Uh, now Redis and caches, there's, what's the other? Uh, varnish, is that what it's called? Varnish cache. Uh, HTTP accelerator designed for content heavy dynamic websites as well as APIs. I think that that's what it is. Basically, you just want to build up assets in memory instead of having it be requested from the disk. So for me, I use Redis on my uh, Ubuntu box that just plugs into this W3 total cache plugin really easily. I just have to turn it on basically and tell it the port. Uh, there's some pretty simple Redis setup stuff that you can do. And the load speed difference between a cached page and an uncached page is quite significant. If I retest here, we were clicking around, right? So maybe I, I messed with the cache. I probably did. It's probably caching page two right now. Uh, I might not get a 100, 100 right now. Uh, hopefully we'll get like a 98. Let's see. No, 100, 100, and, uh, 500, less than 500 milliseconds for the full paint. Uh, and the way that I'm achieving that is through this Redis server. If I, here, let's just clear the cache. I can do that right now. If I just completely empty my cache, and then we retest, then I'll, I'll get a lower score. Just to show you how powerful this is. Um, I had overlooked this for a while as something that I wanted to do too. Okay, we just emptied all the caches. If I go here to retest. Google seems to care a little bit less about the responsiveness, um, which makes sense because when you test the AMP version of the site, uh, the AMP version is using all Google assets instead of stuff that I can control, right? That's one of the reasons why they like uh, AMP. is because they get to stream in all of their assets, but... Oh, same thing. Okay. Well, my website's too fast to even show... <laughs> to even show you the difference in page speed, but... Uh, this is 50 ms faster than the last test, so... Uh, you know, still pretty damn quick. So you might want to look into getting this Redis stuff set up. It's really easy and you don't even need a lot of memory. I think that my cache is like 200 megs or something. It it lives inside of RAM. So if you don't have a lot of RAM on your server, uh, maybe you can't use this, but this is a really easy thing to set up to improve the page speed loads by quite a bit. Uh, and now let's talk about is your server just slow? If you have a really low-end box, like you're renting for a dollar or something, and it's not from one of the big boys, it's not an AWS server, it's not a Google Cloud server, it's not an Azure server, uh, you're renting it from, I don't know, or maybe you're just self-hosting it from your, from your basement or something on a Raspberry Pi. If you find that uh, GT Metrics is better at showing this than PageSpeed Insights, but if you find in your waterfall graph or whatever that your your server is taking a long time to respond, uh, which you can look at here, right? Like this connecting and waiting. These kinds of uh, latency induced by actually how long it takes your server to respond to the request instead of the transfer even happening. You can improve those quite drastically by just having a slightly better server. So. What I run on is, 
I'm on Google Cloud. I'm going to make another video about this uh, because I think that Google Cloud is a little bit of a sleeper. A lot of people talk about AWS, but Google Cloud is like a billion times cheaper and it's the same thing. Uh, my compute instance that I'm using is not powerful at all. This is an F1 micro instance. It has 600 megs of RAM and one CPU core. Uh, this is not a powerful computer at all, and it serves a shitload of requests every month. So for for any kind of web server, if, if you're like running a corporate thing, hey, if you're running a corporate thing and you want me to do a talk at your business, uh, hit me up. But for... For most self-hosted home home projects, hobbyists, uh, you know, you're getting less than 100,000 hits a day or whatever. This is probably more than enough, as long as it's dedicated, right? If you're trying to use this server for 100 different things, then yeah, you're going to run into problems. But this is basically just a web server for me. Uh, and it does more than enough, especially with Redis and everything. So... If you can, if you can find that that's one of the slowest things inside of your page speed, like let's say it takes three seconds you're waiting for the connection to even happen, you probably just have a slow server and it's, uh, it's slowing down your results. So for overview here, I mean, if I CSS and JS assets, this is the easiest thing you can do. You just paste things into uh, a couple online converters or install a plugin and turn it on. It's going to make things faster. If it does break anything, it's likely that things are loading out of sync, like something that relies on jQuery is being loaded before jQuery actually exists, which can be a problem. Lazy loading, only things that are showing up on the screen are being loaded in so you don't have to stream in the entire page every asset that people aren't even looking at inside of the viewport removing and simplifying plugins if you have a bunch of plugins installed on your wordpress site but also if you're just using a, a self-created thing and you're relying on a bunch of libraries like uh, if you don't have to use angular or react or jquery or something you could simplify that and not include those Redis and cache building, if you can do this, this is a pretty substantial increase, especially on lower end boxes to, to turn on. And this is quite a simple optimization. If you don't have access to this because you're using some kind of a cPanel or not renting your own server, uh, that's too bad. But if you are, this is quite a simple optimization that you can use. And then if your server is just slow, maybe you just have to spend an extra $2 a month or something to upgrade the RAM or you should migrate over to a platform like gcloud or something to uh, improve your latency so that's my that's my spiel let's just retest this one time show you that hey i i retested this one a bunch of times and you saw that it's still the same hey i'm not just uh right clicking and changing the value from 10 to 100 uh there we are simplify things Take out the crap, and hopefully your sites will load faster, and you'll get high scores like me. Uh, peace out.